The top stories tonight in Y News. The National Bureau of Investigation vowed to help locate formerly executive Grisel Mago. Malacanang is confident that Senate investigation on the controversial formerly pharmaceutical corporation will not point to President Rodrigo Duterte. The Commission on Human Rights will conduct its own investigation on the death of Philippine National Police Academy third class cadet Carl Magsayo. Imposing alert level 3 or 4 in national capital region has its merits in the COVID-19 response, according to an expert. The leaders of the United States of America, Japan, India and Australia promised to liberate the Indo-Pacific region from rival China. Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou was freed from her house arrest in Canada, ending a prolonged extradi extradition fight with the United States. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, September 27, 2021. I'm Herdine Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, Malacanang is confident that Senate investigation on the controversial formerly pharmaceutical corporation will not point to President Rodrigo Duterte. Rosa Licoz will tell us why. No evidence will incriminate President Rodrigo Duterte in the alleged anomalous transactions of formerly pharmaceutical corporation. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque insists the Commission on Audit already said that there was no proof of overpricing in the procurement of the medical supplies. Based on the recent hearing, formally reportedly swindled the government by selling expired and substandard face shields. But presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said physical evidence must support these claims. Tatayo ba ho yung ganyang testimonya? Tingnan po natin, kinakailangan po kasi yan, masubstantiate. Hanggat maaari, dapat physical evidence ang ating ibigay sa hukuman kasi kung testimonya lang, talk is cheap. Pwedeng mabili, kung pwedeng matapot. So hanapan pa po natin ng substantiated evidence. No? Hindi lang po yung testimonya ng isang tao. Roque also assured that the president will not tolerate deception if allegations that face shields with false production dates delivered to the country are proven true. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The National Bureau of Investigation will now help in locating a formally official following a request from Senate Lurwibbon Committee Chairperson Richard Gordon. Meanwhile, formerly Director Lincoln Ong has now declined to participate in a closed-door discussion with the Senators. Here is the report. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara has confirmed that the National Bureau of Investigation has instructed its intelligence agents to help finding formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation Regulatory Affairs Head Crizel Grace Mago. This comes after Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairperson Richard Gordon sought help in locating the formerly official. According to Gordon, Mago has been out of reach since yesterday after she admitted during the 9th Senate hearing on September 24 about the tampering of expiry certificates of face shields that were supplied to the government. However, he received an information that allegedly Mago has been staying in a safe house. Mayroong isang I think poli niya na sinabi sa akin na may ang may hawak sa kanya si sina safe house with bodyguards. I don't know kung kanino ang galing yung bodyguard na yan. Uh, I don't know kung the government is holding her or somebody else is holding her. That's all I have. 
Meanwhile, in a handwritten letter, former D director Lin Kun Ong has declined the offer of some senators to disclose information before an executive session. Ong says this is in line with the advice of his counsel, attorney Ferdinand Topasho. However, before this, Senator Panfilo Lakson revealed that the supposed transfer of Ong from Senate detention to Pasay City Jail was cancelled after Ong requested for an executive session. For now, Gordon says Ong is safe and is under the custody of the Senate Sergeant at Arms. Pareho silang in danger eh. Kung sakaling triad ang kalaban niya dyan, pwede siyang saktan doon sa preso. Nagay mo naman doon sa Bureau of Prisons, hawak naman ng mga kaibigan ng presidente yon. On second thought, nagay na lang sa safe house na para wala nakakaalam. Despite this, the Senate Blue Ribbon believes the committee has strong evidence even without the two formerly officials. The 10th Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing will be held on Thursday, September 30. Horilin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, the Commission on Human Rights will conduct their own investigation on the death of Philippine National Police Academy third class cadet Carl Magsayo. Leah Ilagan will tell us why. The Commission on Human Rights is deeply concerned on another tragic death that happened due to violence. This especially took place inside the Philippine National Police Academy, an institution where young people are supposed to build their dreams, acquire skills, and develop their character. In a statement released by the CHR spokesperson Jacqueline Andiguia, they said they are already conducting an independent probe on PNPA cadet third class George Carl Magsayo's death. The commission wants to know what really transpired between him and second class Stephen Cesar Maingat that eventually led to his death. Meanwhile, Philippine National Police Chief, Police General Guillermo Eliazar already relieved PNPA Director, Police Major General Roderick Armamento after the incident. As part of the review of rules and regulations and academic policies and aggressive reforms I ordered for the Academy, I already approved the designation of Police Major General Alexander Sampaga as the new Director of Philippine National Police Academy, effective September 29, 2021. Eliazar is confident that Sampaga will implement new policies, rules, and regulation inside the academy. Maingat is now facing criminal case for violation of Republic Act 11053 or Anti-Hazing Act of 2018 resulting in homicide. This is aside from the administrative case filed against Maingat as a ground to expel him from the academy. Leia Ilagan, UNTV. News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A freeze order on the assets of two suspected drug personalities was served today by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, Anti-Money Laundering Council, and the Bureau of Customs. This is in pursuance to the freeze order issued by the 5th Division of the Court of Appeals in May 27, 2021. Pidea Director General Wilkins M. Villanueva said the 5th Division of the Court of Appeals issued a resolution granting the petition for the issuance of a freeze order against the assets of, Jul of Julie Howe Gamboa, alias Kimberly, and spouses Ruben and Teresita Taguba. The freeze order covers on 173 bank and credit accounts and insurance policies, 17 properties, and five motor vehicles of the suspects. These properties were worth around 70 million pesos. The House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability resumed its motu proprio investigation on the alleged overpriced COVID-19 supplies from Farmily Pharmaceutical. The House panel members defended the government's deal on face shields that allegedly tampered its expiry dates. Nel Marigbohok will tell us why. House Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability Vice Chairperson Surigao del Sur 2nd District Representative Johnny Pimentel emphasized that the government is not in disadvantage in the procurement of face shields to formally. 
This despite the statement made by Pharmaly Pharmaceutical Corporation Executive Grisel Grace Mago that the expiry dates of the face shields were tampered. So kung na-distribute po lahat yun and then nagamit naman, eh ano ang, anong lugi ng gobyerna doon? I think uh, the, go the government is not at the disadvantage considering that it was properly distributed it was properly utilized by the frontliners. Wala pong uh, nagreklamo, uh, wala pong report of any complaints, but uh, I just would like to uh, set the record straight. Meron pong uh, 2 million po itong mga face shields na pinag-uusapan po natin. And based on the report to me, all 2 million have been uh, distributed. Furthermore, Diwa Party List Representative Michael Edgar Aglipay asked Health Undersecretary Carol Taino if anybody got sick or had died due to the face shield distributed by the DOH to frontliners. May nakasakit po ba at saka may namatay dahil sa face shields na binigay ng DOH sa mga frontliners? Wala. Malaking tulong po itong face shield na to sa mga frontliners natin. Ma'am, please answer the question. Yes or no lang. May namatay ba at nagkasakit sa face shield na mga inisyo ng DOH? Wala naman po sa pagkakaalam namin po. Formally, Corporate Secretary and Treasurer Mohit Dargani once again denied giving the instruction to tamper the face shield's expiration dates. Meanwhile, the House panel approves the issuance of subpoena against Mago subject to the approval of the House Speaker. If we are one-sided, we will not anymore in invite Ms. Mago. Hence, we will just uh, leave her to be quiet in the darkness. But we want her here to know the whole truth. Currently, the Senate could no longer contact Mago after her revelation. The House panel will resume its probe on October 4. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, the Department of Education and the Department of Health already signed a joint memorandum circular on the guidelines for the limited face-to-face -face classes. Teachers participating in pilot face-to-face -face classes are now required to have their COVID-19 vaccination. Aiko Miguel details why. The children's safety is a topmost priority of the government in conducting the pilot in-person classes. This is the reason behind why teachers and school personnel who are already fully vaccinated will be allowed to participate. The health and education departments have agreed to it and approve of their mandatory inoculation. Both agencies said having voluntary and mandatory vaccination is still up for debate, but this move has legal basis. Ano yung mga instances? when um, health precautions have to be uh, mandatory and not necessarily voluntary. At saka ang lumalabas na may uh, na, na nagsasabi sa, at sa mismo sa on the matter of human rights, when the safety of the state is concerned, the survival of a country is concerned from a pandemic, no? Kasi may mga instances na may mga pandemics na nung, uh, in the past. Uh, the state has the right to uh, impose mandatory precautions. If indeed uh, this vaccination should be there, no? For us to ensure the safety of our children. So ito naman po ay naiparating na rin natin sa ating vaccine cluster kung saan nakapagbigay ng suporta po ang sila Secretary Galvez tungkol dito sa pagbabakuna na ito and an advisory was already issued by the National Vaccines Operations Cluster kung saan sinasabi na nila to fast track the inoculation of all unvaccinated public and private school teachers and non-teaching personnel within their jurisdictions. According to DOH Technical Advisory Group member and pediatric infectious disease expert Dr. Ana Ong Lim, Adults in schools and even at home who completed their COVID-19 shots can help protect children who are also vulnerable of getting infected with the virus. Yung uh, uh, mahigpit na pagsunod sa minimum public health standards, pati na rin yung pagpapabakuna, ang siyang paraan na magagawa natin para maging ligtas yung ating mga makakasamang bata. 
Based on the Joint Memorandum Circular on Operational Guidelines on the Conduct of Pilot Face-to-Face -face Learning, the pilot implementation will run for two months. It will be done among a maximum of 120 schools across the country. These schools have passed the readiness assessment by DepEd and their local governments. DepEd added that the pilot will feature a combined implementation of face-to-face -face classes and distance learning. The government has yet to announce the date of the pilot run. Based on the United Nations Children's Fund or UNICEF report, the Philippines and Venezuela are the only remaining countries that have not reopened classes yet. The World Health Organization acknowledges the government's effort to reopen classes in the Philippines. This virus will not be going away soon. We now have better tools in vaccine access. So uh, we need to look at how we can bring back education, how we can minimize the harm to children. We applaud the efforts of the DOH and the Department of Education in piloting how to safely reopen schools. Authorities will carefully and cautiously monitor its pilot implementation. The government assures they will be preparing the appropriate health and safety protocols against COVID-19 to protect both teachers and learners. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. An expert says imposing either alert level 3 or 4 in the national capital region has merits against the government against the government's COVID-19 response. Meanwhile, officials as well as different expert groups favor the implementation of alert level system in other areas outside the metropolis. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why live. University of the Philippines COVID-19 pandemic response team member Professor Joma Rabahante says that the government should carefully consider all their set metrics in imposing an alert level across Metro Manila. He explains that although a decline in the data including reproduction and growth rate have been observed, the positivity rate is still high while the utilization of intensive care units and hospitals have been in plateau. Rabahante emphasizes that it is better to retain alert level 4 in the metropolis while seeing further decline of data. May merits both, downgrade or upgrade may merits, pero kung mag risk tayo ng alert level 3, continuous monitoring, as in, pag nakita natin biglang mag-spike, mag increase eh, baka dapat dapat hindi siya yung every every ano every period meron talagang kapag in 5 days next spike baka mag-decide agad the expert however says that the continuous vaccination is important in any rate of the alert level system the department of health's epidemiology bureau earlier said that the alert level system in metro manila could remain in number 4 given the current bed and icu utilization in hospitals Nagiging maingat tayo dahil sa ating pag-aanid sa hindi tayo ito tumitingin sa iisa o dalawa lamang metrics. Tayo po ay nagtatriangulate at meron tayong iba't ibang metrics na tinitingnan para po buo yung picture na maibibigay namin sa inyo in terms of COVID-19 situation para sa DOH liban sa case at fatality data kasama dito ang healthcare capacity, ang ating PDITR indicators ang nagbanggit nga po kanina ang ating vaccination data. Meanwhile, Professor Abahante added that imposing alert level system outside the national capital region will help as it only restricts concerned areas and not the entire local government unit. Octo Research Fellow Professor Guido David also favors its implementation in provinces. Okay, it could be tried to other provinces because even if it's uh, uh, right now a high risk area uh, uh, having a surge, better than alert level 5, which is like the ECQ, so that they can implement it. The League of Provinces of the Philippines, meanwhile, says they are just waiting for the decision of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. Okay, sa amin yan, yung granular lockdown, but uh, provided the NGUs or the local chief executives will be given the power to immediately implement a change in the system or uh, a, any modification of the protocols prescribed by IATF. Provided that uh, the IATF is immediately notified of the uh, decision of the LGU to change the system. Governor Velasco further says that the LGUs are continuously in talks with the IATF and the Department of the Interior and local government to prepare them for its implementation. Meanwhile, the IATF is already open to the possibility of opening fitness gyms in a 10% capacity. The idea lang po is uh, to allow this at alert level 4 para may continuity ang uh, safer business operations. Ang i-adjust lang natin operating capacity 
depende sa alert level para hindi po sila open close open close sa iba ibang alert level. The DOH will announce on October 1 whether to retain or modify the COVID-19 alert level in the National Capital Region. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, or BJMP, has registered over 42,000 persons deprived of liberty inoculated against COVID-19. As of September 13, 2021, out of 122,498 PDLs in the country, 35% or over 42,000 of them have already received the vaccine against COVID-19, while 12,568 BJMP personnel are fully vaccinated and 14,441 are still waiting for their second dose. The DILG and BJMP continue to communicate with the National Vaccine Operations Center to provide COVID-19 vaccines to residents inside the prison. The DILG emphasized that PDLs are not second class citizens and they also have the right to receive protection against the virus. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, believes close to 9 million residents, or 90% of Metro Manila's eligible population, are expected to complete their COVID-19 vaccination by December. As of September 26, 2021, 7,119,728 individuals, or 72.65% of the region's 9.8 million eligible population, have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. MDA Chairman Ben-Hur Abalos thinks that vaccinations have played a huge part in avoiding critical and severe cases and deaths. So at the time, by October 26, yang yang 86 million na magpapabakuna ay magiging 8 million na ang two dose natin sa Metro Manila, which is about 82%. Hindi biro yung 82%, napakalaking bagay yun. And once we reach December 26, it will be 90%. The Commission on Elections and Bank may release its decision over the proposed voter registration extension next this week. Meanwhile, the bill seeking to extend COMELEC registration is now waiting for the President's signature. Dante Amento tells us why live. Dante, go ahead. Hello, po, Brad. Good evening. Commission on Elections spokesperson Director James Jimenez has disclosed that the Comelec Management Committee discussed today the proposed extension of voter registration. And on Wednesday, the Mancom will forward the recommendation to the Anbank for deliberation. We're preparing uh, the recommendation now, and it will be submitted to the bank uh, on on Wednesday. So it, the and bank will deliberate on the recommendation, and we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Last Friday, Jimenez said that the Comelec may announce its decision either to allow the extension or not a day before the deadline of voter registration on September 30. Meanwhile, Congress has approved House Bill 10261 and Senate Bill 2408, respectively, seeking for voter registration extension by another one month. And subsequently, the Senate has also approved or adopted House Bill 10261 today, which means no need for bicameral conference by both chambers. Senator Miguel Zubiri says they are now just waiting the president to sign it into law. But Senator Sani Angara on his part earlier manifested if they can consider the COMELEX call that it can only allow a week of extension due to some considerations in the preparations of the 2022 elections. Perhaps that's something uh, we can consider and we can work with the uh, poll body going forward, Mr. President. I realize uh, suffrage is uh, the ultimate expression of our democracy, but uh, we also have to think also, I guess, of, of some of the practicalities in this day. Jago Nakomelec is also now preparing for the filing of the Certificate of Candidacy starting this Friday until October 8, 2020. 21. And that's the latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Dante Amento, for that live report. 
More than 85% of which subsidy applications in New Zealand are completed, according to the Ministry of Social Development. But there are still more than 60,000 applications yet to be processed, with the majority of the businesses waiting for over a month. The government said most applications have been completed within three working days, but sole traders are feeling the pinch of the lockdown. Nearly 700,000 wage subsidy applications have been received since last month. This is several thousand more than compared to last year's lockdown. Meanwhile, hundreds of businesses across the retails and hospitality sectors are on the brink of closure without extra support from the government. This comes after Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has ruled out extending the COVID-19 wage subsidy scheme when Auckland drops alert levels. Brighter months is seen in the state of Victoria as double vaccinated individuals become free with easing off restrictions. Joselito Liquido will tell us why live. Joselito? Good evening, Elsie. In efforts to reach 70% full vaccination rate in the state of Victoria by October 26, the Australian government have detailed a plan to ease restrictions for fully vaccinated people. From October 11, the government will initiate around 20 vaccinated economy trials covering the sectors of hospitality, hairdressing, beauty services, and tourism businesses. Victoria Premier Dan Andrews fully supports the trial and states that progress will, be, will continue based on health advice. Six regional areas in Victoria have been invited to participate in the new plan and together will coordinate with the Victorian government to oversee ideal and appropriate businesses and events. Suitable areas for the initiative will be required to host vaccination passport trials, only accepting those who are fully vaccinated. With months of lost income and an increase in mental health crisis, they are hoping that this will be effective. This decision was received with mixed reaction from the public, with some welcoming the new initiative to move forward from the virus and some opposing the idea claiming that it is unfair that businesses will be responsible to enforce the plan. Business Victoria remains firm on the trial and posted on Twitter yesterday that this is a progressive step for the state in becoming a vaccinated economy. Elsie? Thank you, Joselito Liquido. The leaders of the United States of America, Japan, India, and Australia promised to liberate the Indo-Pacific region from rival China. Queenie Rivera details why live. Queenie? I'll see. The Quad leaders shared their concerns about rival country China and its tightening grip on the Indo-Pacific region. In their first in-person summit last Friday, the two-hour lengthy meeting, the four democracies vow to free and safeguard the Indo-Pacific from unwanted power and authority. In their joint statement, they emphasized the region's right to justice, navigation, democracy, and territorial integrity. Although not explicitly identifying and naming China, the leader's statement highly revolved around the tensions brought by China's growing economic, diplomatic, and military influence. During their meeting, the Quad renewed their commitment in ensuring a stable and independent Indo-Pacific region not influenced by coercion. Specifically, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison highlighted the Quad's role as promoters of freedom and in their strong solidarity and common vision of world order rooted in international law. We are liberal democracies that believe in a world order that favours freedom and we believe in a free and open Indo-Pacific. On the other hand, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian commented against the Quad and their project, stating that they are doomed to fail. Although the country has denounced that the Quad is not subject to a Cold War contract for now, I'll see. Thank you, Queenie Rivera. Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou was freed from her house arrest in Canada, ending a prolonged extradition fight with the United States. She was hailed as a hero upon her return to China. Ruth Bahe tells us why live. Ruth? Good evening, Elsie. 
An outburst of national pride sparked the Chinese people to hail Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou as a hero. Her return symbolizes China's victory over the West, a commentary in the official newspaper of the Communist Party said. The commentary also called Meng's case as an act of political persecution by the U.S. to crack down on China's high-tech enterprises. Meanwhile, a top commenter on the Chinese social media platform Weibo described Meng's freedom as a diplomatic coup for China and a manifestation of China's strength. Internet users tracked her flight across the Arctic Ocean from Canada, where she had been detained for three years. Tens of millions of people tuned in to watch state media's online coverage of her arrival at Shenzhen Airport Saturday. Hundreds of people gathered at the arrival hall to welcome the Huawei executive as the crowd belled out patriotic songs while waving the Chinese flag. She was freed to go home after reaching an agreement with the U.S. Department of Justice to defer her prosecution until late 2022, after which point her charges could be dropped. The daughter of Huawei's founder was prosecuted for fraud charges related to alleged Iran sanctions violations in December 2018. Back to you, Elsie. Thank you, Ruth Bahe. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a final word, giving glory to God. From the book of James, chapter 1, verse 6, it says, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 27, 2021. I'm Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Emmanuel Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. We're preparing uh, the recommendation now, and it will be submitted to the bank uh, on on Wednesday. So it, the and bank will deliberate on the recommendation, and we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Absolutely not. Wala naman po silang ebidensya na kukuha na may overpriced. Sinabi na ng COA, walang overpriced. So ano maililig kay Presidente? Ingay lang to. May namatay ba at nagkasakit sa face shield na mga inisyo ng DOH? Wala naman po sa pagkakaalam namin po. Mayroon siyang, I think, poli niya na sinabi sa akin na May, may, may hawak sa kanya, she's in a safe house with bodyguards. I don't know kung kaninong galing yung bodyguard na yan. Uh, I don't know kung the government is holding her or somebody else is holding her. That's all I have.